for families who are spending and individuals who are spending more than 30 percent of their income on rent plus utilities, they get a tax credit to help them get through the month. I'm proposing a big structural change, universal child care and early education for all our babies. We must protect and expand our voting rights, get the dark money out of politics, and combat attacks on our democracy. Democratic presidential hopefuls pitched their platforms at the National Action Network convention on Friday. But you'd be forgiven if you still don't know much about the policy ideas of candidates like Senators Harris, Warren, or Gillibrand. It may be because the media has, for the last several weeks, spent most of its time fixating on some of the men running for president. 2020 coverage has, to a large extent, been focused on Beto, Biden, and Bernie. The trio Washington Post columnist Margaret Sullivan calls the B-Boys. She writes, quote, we hear a lot about the B-Boys in polling and fundraising and media ardor. They begin to seem inevitable, invincible. It's early, of course. But right now, these three almost seem to have the whole thing sewn up. With a record number of women running for president, why are the men getting all the attention? Joining me now is MSNBC political contributor Jason Johnson, Neera Tandon, president of the Center for American Progress, and Kwame Jackson, of Newsweek. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to start with, at the table with you, Jason, because it, it really, I mean, from the Vanity Fair, glow, you know, glossy cover of Beto and to all of the other candidates mocking him for jumping right. on tables and all doing it to mm -hmm. the fixation of the media. Let me re read a little piece of this Washington Post article, The Rise of Bernie, Beto, Biden. The rise of Senator Bernie Sanders, ex-Congressman Beto O'Rourke, and former Vice President Joe Biden in a field of historic diversity has caused dismay among some Democrats, particularly African Americans and women, hoping for a mold-breaking nominee who reflects the changing face of the party in the country. I think that sort of sums it up. Well, it's Beto, Biden, and Buttigieg. I mean, I mean, yeah. everybody's been kissing his butt too, and, yeah. and it's amazing to me. Look, it's because let's be candid. Most of the reporters are white. And they're looking for well, a white guy who makes them feel good about themselves. <laughs> I mean, some of these people look, Bernie and Biden, it makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah. Beto, who didn't win anything. Buttigieg, who, it, it, look, basically, he's, he's got a Rhodes Scholarship. He was a mayor of a small city. He's just a white gay version of Cory Booker, right? And at least Cory Booker's in the Senate. Right. So I, I think in many respects, this reflects the lack of diversity in the media. Because yeah. these guys are not the most dynamic or even interesting candidates, except for the top two people. Well, and, and the thing is, um, part of it, I think, Nira. Mm -hmm. is the polling. So, so I, and I'm jumping around here a little bit, but if you look at the polling, who's on top? It is the white guys, right? So if you go to the, <coughs> the, 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 the real clear politics average um, for the last week of March, Biden is on top. I mean, he has the highest name recognition. Bernie Sanders is second place, like very consistently. Then you have Kamala Harris consistently in third, followed by um, Beto and Warren. And that, that top five has been fairly consistent. You know, you zoom it out a little bit, you have Buttigieg in there. You go by the money, Sanders did raise mm -hmm. the most money, right? I mean, he raised $18 million. I mean, granted, he ran for president. He was, like, <laughs> second place running a national ticket, you know? And then you had the other guys, like... Beto and Buttigieg get actually more ink for the money that they raise than Kamala Harris, who was in second place. And then yesterday we had Andrew Yang on, who's gotten, you know, almost no real attention from media and has raised all this money. We put him on, but he's not a white dude, so he's not getting all the attention. It does feel like, is this driven by the polling and the fundraising or by something else in your view? I mean, I do worry. I do think it's a self-reinforcing uh, prophecy in the sense of this. I think Democrats are so anxious to win and to beat Donald Trump that they look at polls and they look at the money and then it reinforces the front runners are our front runners. And, you know, ultimately, I think it is very early. Ultimately, I do think that it is hard to be the nominee of the Democratic Party and not be able to put forward a broad coalition of voters. Mm -hmm. So our last two town nominees, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, were able to put together a broad coalition of voters, a diverse coalition of both African-American, Latino and white uh, voters. And I do think actually a lot of voters, liberals, uh, indeed even white liberals, are sensitive to the fact that when a candidate goes into South Carolina and cannot get any people of color to come to that event, it is something to be mindful of. We're very early. I do worry the media attention reinforces the money race, um, and that's self-reinforcing in a sense. It creates a weird feedback loop. But I, ultimately, I, I do think it will be hard to emerge from this process and not have 
uh, a variety of voters from very different backgrounds supporting the nominee. Yeah, and you know, Kwame, you, you actually took this like to the limit, right? You wrote a piece. <laughs> the title of it is Give Me Diversity or Give Me Death. Like you went <laughs> in, right? And let me, let me read a little bit of you to you. Um, the rise of Senator Bernie Sanders, ex-Congressman Beto O'Rourke, former Vice President Joe Biden in a field with historic diversity has caused dis oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. In both 2020 America and the 2020 presidential election to come, I'm shouting, give me diversity or give me death. I'm saying time's up on the old mold of leadership that says only the only template for safe, viable, electable, likable, and stable leadership only comes in the form of two white men, that only the white savior leadership model can normalize America and restore order from the Trump tsunami. Explain. Joy, it was my Patrick Henry moment. It was my James Baldwin <laughs> moment. It's basically saying we are at an inclusion inflection point, and it's time to demand diversity. And what I mean by that is, let me unpack this. It's much bigger than just the vote. If you look at, you know, Beyonce's recent uh, deal with Reebok and walking away from Reebok because they didn't have diverse representation and, and going with Adidas. If you look at Jordan Peele's statement about casting uh, minority leads in his films and not focusing on casting uh, white leads in his films, if you look at, you know, the, the rise of crazy rich Asians and the and the the push for diversity and the demand for representation in film, the same with Black Panther. People are at an inclusion moment where they're saying, look, enough is enough. This is not 1960. We are in 2020. America is no longer striving to be diverse. It is diverse. And we must and we must demand a diverse slate of candidates who represent us. And you cannot look in this field in 2020 and say there are not diverse candidates who can step forward into the VP position or the B or the or the presidential position. So people who say that, look, we have to go to a white flight to safety in order to beat Donald Trump. That's a fallacy. And America has to live up to a broader statement, and we must demand that through our vote. So I did take it to the end. I, I, I mean, so, and, and this, uh, oh, go, go on, go on, go on, go on, Nira. Yeah, so I, 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 I believe we should have a diverse ticket. I absolutely agree that the, that either the presidential or the vice presidential should candidates uh, on the Democratic side should be, uh, represent the full diversity of the party. And I think that that's, that is my hope. I, I will say, uh, and I, that would be my demand as a voter, but I, ha you know, I will say that all of these candidates are better than Donald Trump. And uh, we have to also convince voters of how to vote. And at the end of the day, we have a president who is putting children in cages, and we will have a general election between two parties. And yeah. I think people have to decide which one is going to be better for people of color. Yeah. Because that, that's whether whoever we like uh, is going to go, regardless of that, we're going to have a choice to make in 2020. And I can tell you, all of these candidates are infinitely better than Donald Trump. What, I, been at the same? I, okay, go on, go on. I agree that they're all infinitely better than Donald Trump, but I also agree that we have to hold America's feet to the fire. That yeah. we have to say that there is a line in the sand that this is no longer a time to say, Two white men are the only viable, electable, safe, secure way to move forward and to kind of rescue America from the Trump tsunami. We really have to say that we need to include at least one person of diverse background to lead America and to recognize different archetypes of leadership, whether they be women, whether they be LGBTQ. We have to look beyond what we always think to kind of the white flight to safety as our only mold of leadership. Okay, wait, and we have to force America to do let, that. Let me, get, let, me get, let me get Jason, because Jason, the, the thing that I've been noticing, and when I go, read a talk, to voters is you hear the safe choices yeah, give exactly. me the white guy yes. and then put a lady on it and I mean <laughs> Don Leguizamo who I, I love Don Leguizamo first of all let me just put that out there that I'm a big fan of his he tweeted out let's just put this out there and do yes. Biden Harris and yeah. I've heard this Biden or Buttigieg, Buttigieg Harris, and Harris and people went in because they're like yes, they she's <laughs> more experienced yes. why she go yeah. second yes. but a lot of people are doing the add a black lady the, thing. Here, here's the thing well Joe Biden is doing Joe it, Biden Buttigieg, tried everybody, it everybody, everybody seems to, you know, they'll probably ask you Joy like at some point add a black lady add a black lady and stir, right? Here, here's the problem. Stir. Look, it's gonna be a white guy. What, what kind of America do people think we're living in? It's been white guys all along. Barack Obama is the outlier. So right. the issue is not whether or not we're going to have somebody white as president. It's gonna be a white dude. The question is going to be what kind of white dude is it gonna be? And I will say this. Voters during out elections, they are nervous, they are desperate, and they do not take risks. They pick the person who they think can win. And I don't think anybody in America right now believes that after getting Donald Trump and the level of racism 
that he has brought and the fact that 47% of the population wanted him, they're not going to risk it on a woman. They're not going to risk it on a black woman. They're not going to risk it on somebody who's LGBT. People will say that now because they want to sound progressive, but right. at the end of the day, it's going to be one of these white dudes. Wow. And but it, the question it, becomes, why is it a risk to go with a minority candidate? That's, 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 that's the deeper level of leadership that we have to look at. Yeah. Other people well, I think, uh, to be honest about that, I do think people are fearful of the yes. what Republicans yeah. have done. Yeah. It's not Democrats. They're, afraid. they're, they're, it's, they're scared of Republicans. Yeah, they're running to the they safety. racialized the country. Yeah, they're running to the safety of the white dude. Uh, Jason's <laughs> going to be back in our next hour with his special brand of citizens. Here at Tandon, <laughs> Kwame Jackson, thank you guys very much. And coming thank up. You.